It's the end of the summer. Time to come in off the lake to venerable Camp Randall Stadium in Madison. Today, the 125th season of Wisconsin football kicks off a new era as the Badgers host the University of Massachusetts. Since 1894, the UW Band has played for university football games. And today, under the direction of Michael LeCrone, Director of Bands, the University of Wisconsin Marching Band on Wisconsin. Ladies and gentlemen, the University of Wisconsin Marching Band. Introducing Wisconsin drum major from Waukesha, Wisconsin, Donnie LaFrance. The Wisconsin and legacy of Camp Randall Stadium. The University of Wisconsin Badgers coming out of the playing surface here at Camp Randall Stadium. Unlike a lot of head coaches who lead their teams out onto the field, Gary Anderson, the new head coach at Wisconsin, believes it is their moment, the players, and so he prefers to come out after everyone else has entered the field of battle. We're at Camp Randall Stadium on a warm Labor Day holiday weekend. The Gary Anderson era begins as the Wisconsin Badgers play host to the Minutemen of the University of Massachusetts. Hi, everybody. I'm Wayne Larravee, along with former Michigan All-American John Jansen. Great to be with you, big guy. This is a new era, as we mentioned. Gary Anderson becomes the head coach here just four years as head coach at Utah State. What a job he did there. Now he's got quite a challenge ahead of him. He did. He turned that program around. The difference now being not at Utah State, but at Wisconsin, he doesn't have to turn around a program. He inherits one with a lot of success. Three Big Ten championships they're coming off of. I'm excited to see Gary Anderson today, especially since he says today is the players' day. I want to see them go out there and make plays and, and, and see how they do. You're excited? So is Gary Anderson. We talked to him moments ago. It's great to be here, uh, finally. I mean, I'm just excited to sit back and watch the kids play. We go through camp and winter conditioning, spring ball, summer, all the stuff that comes with it, and they've been awesome. This is their day. It's all about them, and, you know, I expect them to play well, and we're going to do everything we can to make sure we put them in the right positions, but uh, I'm just excited to get to game day. Well, there's a new head coach, and there was a quarterback battle this summer in camp, and uh, Joel Stavi gets the start here today. He does. Joel Stavi won this champ, won this quarterback position because he's a little bit more polished. His skill set is a little bit more, his ability, and he's a little bit more accurate down the field, which is what they want to try to do on offense this year. Uh, not so much uh, in the run game, but they want to be able to get downfield, spread it out a little bit more. Well, you know, defensively, they're going to present a lot of different looks, but one look we'll see a lot of is number 44, Chris Borland, the great line. Linebacker is in the middle of that defense. He is, and when you talk about switching the defense around, you, you'd love to center it around a guy like Chris Borland. He goes out there and makes plays. He's a football player no matter where he lines up. This 3-4 defense, a little bit of a difference for him, but he's going to go out there and make plays. All right, let's talk about some of the keys, not just for today for Wisconsin, but perhaps for the season. What do you see? Well, offensively, they want to even things out. They want to be able to get the ball downfield a little bit more. Last year, about 1,000 yards more rushing than they had receiving. They want to be able to get downfield, use that play action, get, use that shotgun, and get it out there. 
They also, on defense, want to, want to make sure their assignments sound. This is a very, very complicated defense. A lot of terminology. They want to make sure that they get out there and, and they line up right and they do their positions right. Monty Ball, the great running back, is gone, but there is no shortage of running back talent here at Wisconsin. The stable is pretty full. James White, Melvin Gordon. Yeah, you look at the impact players today and in, in, in both of those running backs, very productive the last couple of years. Today, they're going to go out there and really set the tone for this team by being able to get some confidence on the ground and allow Joel Stavi to be able to sit back there with confidence and not have the pressure of going out there and winning ball games. 72 degrees. It's going to warm up now that the sun has come out. We had overcast throughout the morning, but the sun is out here in Madison, and it will be a warm holiday weekend Saturday for this college football opener. Gary Anderson looking on his first game. UMass will kick to Wisconsin. Kenzel Doe back deep to receive for the Badgers. And Levin Good, the kickoff man for the Minutemen of UMass. Great to have you with us. And we're underway. Taking it off a couple of hops. Here comes Doe. Little stutter step move. Gets him across the 20. Nice return. Close to the 30-yard line. So Kenzel Doe, and we'll talk about him as the game goes on. There is Joel Stave, redshirt sophomore, Greenfield, Wisconsin. Number one nationally in yards per passing attempt a season ago, 14.22 on play action passes. And they'll do a lot of play action in this offense, especially with the way they run the football. First and 10, Wisconsin. First carry for James White, who has patiently waited his turn here in Madison. Close to the 36-yard line. Here are the starters, led by James White, 5'10", senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Everett of course, is the key at wide receiver. Patterson heads up a deep core of tight ends as you get a look at the rest of the uh, starters on offense for Wisconsin. That's Kenzel Doe to the wing on the right side. Now he's in motion. Second down, Wisconsin. Big reverse. Big run up the middle. To outside the numbers, it's White inside the UMass 20-yard line. James White does a great job of, of reading his blocks, getting in where he needs to fit in in that offense. That offensive line is getting great movement up front right now. You can see he gets into that line of scrimmage one or two yards before he even has to make his first cut. And from there on out, it's just a foot race. A little misdirection to the backfield. 49-yard run by White and Wisconsin at the doorstep. First down inside the 20. Stavi. Not much there at that time. That was uh, Melvin Gordon. They'll alternate the two running backs as they go along here today. The auto owners defense for UMass. Galen Clemens relentless in the middle. Anderson is a transfer. Messiah, very productive linebacker. They really like Stanley Andre. Second down for Wisconsin at the UMass 15. Stop it. First and goal inside the five. And that's that play action that we talked about in the, in, in the opener. All of those runs that, that we just saw set up. You'll see here, they fake it to Watt at the fullback position, and they get White out in the flat. He does a great job. They're really excited about being able to use him in the pass game. Both uh, Derek Watt and James White, all their running backs are, are, are very effective at catching the pass and getting downfield. It's a, a, a nice addition to their offense. First and goal for Wisconsin. Frederick, Jordan Frederick in motion. Stop it. Stop it. Takes it himself. Touchdown. Oh. 
Joel Starby on a four yard touchdown run. And Wisconsin's opening drive under Gary Anderson pans out for six. And you can see all of the linebackers, everybody is so concerned about who they're covering. They all lose sight of uh, Joel Stabe. He's able to just walk right into the end zone. Kyle French for the point after. Five plays, 70 yards. James White, the bell cow on that drive for Wisconsin. And Joel Stave finished it off with a four-yard touchdown run. The Anderson era off and running in Madison. The Ohio State University. The University of Texas Southern University. California, Berkeley. Old Dominion University. Harvard University. The University of Virginia. The Texas State University. Norfolk State University. Virginia University. Arizona State. Pennsylvania State University. <laughs> Football in BTN is presented by the United States Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines. And brought to you by Case IH. Be ready with the proven leader. Visit CaseIH.com slash efficient power. Camp Randall Stadium on a Labor Day weekend. Gary Anderson's team motors into the end zone to take a 7-0 lead. And we'll get a look at his defense in a moment. Kyle French on the kickoff. Dudley Giles back deep and told to stay in the end zone and downs it. UMass will accept at the 20-yard line. The Chevrolet scoring drive, and it was a snappy drive indeed, John, for this Wisconsin Badgers team, directed by Joel Stavi. Yeah, it was very effective what they did on offense. You know, they were handing the ball off, getting confidence in that offensive line, letting them get a rhythm, and then they hit that play action to James White in the, uh, uh, in the flat. Just a great job of very methodically moving that ball down the field. That offense right now is probably riding on a high because they've got a lot of confidence in what they were just able to do. Mike Wegson is a redshirt sophomore out of Knoxville, Tennessee, at quarterback for the Minutemen of UMass. Spread offense for the Minutemen. Wegson on the rollout, a little wide of the mark. It's headed for Tajay Sharp. The UMass offense, Stacy Bedell getting the start in place of Jordan Brodnax, the best running back of the Minutemen, banged up a knee at training camp and will not play here today. Also a tight end, Rob Blanchflower, their preseason all-max selection not playing today due to injury. Charlie Molner in his second year guiding the UMass program. Second and ten. Bedell for about five to the 30-yard line. Third down coming up for UMass. We're going to see a lot of changes defensively, a lot of different fronts. Auto owners insurance. Here's a look at the fellows that will be playing up front for Wisconsin. Very happy with their defensive front seven. A lot of experience in this defense, and that helped in the transition to a 3-4 look. Penalty marker down now. Might be for a flinch on the offense. Todd Gearlings is our referee. Offsides, contact, 96 defense, five-yard penalty, results in a first down. The big nose tackle out of Minnetonka, Minnesota. Bo Allen a bit anxious there and jumped offsides. There is Coach Molner. Second season, took over the program in 2011. Veteran offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. Developed offenses at Notre Dame, Cincinnati, and Central Michigan. This is a third down call. Bedell, I beg your pardon, first down off of the... Uh, off of the penalty and a fumble and Wisconsin recovers fumble by Bedell and the recovery made by Brendan Kelly he came out of there with it apparently Armstrong on the hit as you can see they pull that guard around he just misses that block on on Chris Borland Chris Borland I, I, if I'm right that's 14 forced fumbles for him in his career 
Yeah, you're right. Borland got in there on the hip. 14, that's the most in school history. And that ties the all-time FBS record. Uh, Chris first fumbles Bo forced in a career. Chris Borland just has a great nose for the ball. A, it does a great job of shedding blocks, which you saw on that play, and, and, and going in there and making a hit. Let's see what Wisconsin does here if they go quick strike. Off play action, Stavi. Over the top, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Devin Brown. Out close to the 20-yard line, and one turnover begets another on the very next play. 7 at nothing, Wisconsin early going, but the Minutemen turn back the Badgers. Stavi's first interception of the season. UMass takes over when we come back. Wisconsin leading UMass 7 nothing. UMass about to take a 14 nothing lead, but Joel Stavi's pass intercepted moments ago. And you can see right here, Joel Stavi, there is absolutely nobody threatening the zone in here or out here. So all that all Devin Brown has to do is sit back there, watch Joel Stavi's eyes. Joel doesn't see him. And, and he delivers a, a, an absolute strike to Devin Brown. And, and, you know, you see so many times after a, after a turnover, they wanted to make that big strike, get that momentum. Just a bad choice there by Stavi. UMass first down. Bedell pile driving to the 20, maybe the 21. Gain of three, maybe four yards on the play. If you're looking for the Southern Illinois game, go to btn.com slash game finder right now to see where you can find your game, the Southern Illinois, Illinois game on btn.com slash game finder. Second down for UMass. Second at about seven. Trying to pick his way through traffic. Not much there once again for Stacy Bedell, a redshirt freshman from Mastic Beach, New York. Borland in on that tackle for Wisconsin. You'll hear his name a lot. You will, especially in this defense. This defense is is designed to get those linebackers plays. Uh, you know, the, the, the three down linemen, the nose and the two ends that are playing over the tackles, are they're supposed to eat up those blockers and allow those inside linebackers to roam around. And Chris Borland's going to have a lot of opportunity to make plays. Wexon checks with his slot receiver, Derek Beck. Third down call. Beck a tight end in motion. Wexon rolling that way. Beck's got the catch. Good, sure tackle on the flank of the defense by Peniel Jean. Denies the minute men a first down. But well, it's a great job by the offensive line of, uh, of UMass there, the deciphering where everybody's coming from. You see Borland's trying to hit the A-gap. They sprint the quarterback out just a little bit. Wisconsin is trying to create that pre-snap confusion. On there, you saw only two defensive linemen. You, you had four linebackers. Uh, and... They're just moving people around, trying to make it very hard on that center and the quarterback to decide who's actually rushing. John, they gave him a very generous spot. The crowd was booing a moment ago because UMass gets a first down off of that. First and ten, Wagon. And uh, his pass is complete on a tumbling grab on the far side. And once again, that's Beck, the tight end. Mike Wexen with a good throw to the outside. Well, if you've got a tight end with good hands and can get open, that's that's usually the quarterback's best friend. It's a great outlet for him. It's an easy easy dump off, a back out of the backfield, or a tight end in a flat. Great confidence builder for the quarterback. And now penalty markers down on this snap of the ball on second and short. False start. Offense. Number 79. Five-yard penalty. It remains second down. Vincent Westcar, the right guard, guilty of that uh, penalty. So instead of second and short, second and about six. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see a lot of quick specs by, uh, by UMass. One of the ways to get that Wisconsin defense out of all of that pre-step movement that they do is to quick snap, make them get lined up, make them make their choice. Wexen. Good protection initially, takes it himself. Out across the 35-yard line before Brendan Kelly arrives on the scene for Wisconsin. Third down coming up. Mike Wexen as a freshman had a started 11 games last season as a redshirt freshman. 
He had nine interceptions. Nine of his uh, interceptions came in the second half or overtime of games last season. He threw ten interceptions on the campaign. Nine of them after halftime or an overtime. Yeah, and we had, had a chance to talk to Coach uh, Offense Coordinator John Bond. They're really happy with his progress on a day-to-day -day basis of becoming more comfortable and decision-making. Third and short, and it looked like a flinch by Bedell, the running back. Offense, number 70, five-yard penalty. It remains third down. Anthony Dima, the Outland Trophy candidate. Yeah, we've, uh, I, I, I've had a number of coaches tell me, uh, Bo Schembechler, when I was first at Michigan, it, there is absolutely nobody that's worth five yards. So make sure that you're not the, not the one that's jumping off sides. Anthony Dima <laughs> there, uh, he's got a lot going for him this year. He's, he's a very, very talented player, but we can't have those pre-snap uh, penalties. Both he and Bedell. Bedell flinched as well in the offensive backfield. Now third down. Wexin. And it's rough this time by the tight end. Derek Beck, are they ruling the fumble? They may be. On his way to the end zone, Desmond Southward. They are ruling, apparently, a catch and fumble. The officials are talking it over. Take a look at it again, John. Did he have possession long enough? Boy, that's a that's, tough call yeah. right there. He did turn and take a couple of steps, but I don't know that he ever had possession or control of that football. Remember, there's a process to the catch. And replay takes a look at everything on the college level, and they will look at this. It doesn't look to me, John, like he ever had possession of that football. No, when you when you see him turn and he's he's trying to get that ball up into that that arm position and just never gets a grip on it. Yep, getting a look. There it is. That's a great look by the crew here from the end zone on the opposite side. Yeah, that ball it, it never comes above waist level. If that ball had gotten up to that jersey uh, and he had gotten it locked in with his arm, I'd say yeah, fumble. But right there, I don't think he ever really had possession of it. So replay takes a look at it. Remember, they need indisputable video evidence to overturn a call on the field. But here's the other thing, John. I did not see a clear indication of touchdown by any of the officials either. I think they were always kind of reserved and waiting for knowing that this play would go to replay. Well, I, I will give the, the, the officials a lot of credit on this one for allowing that play to, to, to finish. Yes. You go ahead and let it finish so, so they can go back if they need to and give that ball back to UMass if that's the call. If not, they don't blow that whistle dead. Uh, if they were to blow that whistle, then, then and Wisconsin would be stripped of a touchdown. And, and John, you know, really, when you look at it, you've got to let a play play out. Uh, because, again, if replay overturns, they need to know where to go back with the ball, that type of thing. It, it, not just in a play like this, but in a fumble and, or an interception, that type of deal. After we're, we're further the review, the pass was incomplete. Therefore, there's no interception. It's Massachusetts ball. Fourth down and six on the 32-yard line on the left hash. Please reset the game clock to 7 minutes, 56 seconds. 7.56. Want to take one more look at that play from a wide angle and watch the officiating crew because although they let this play continue, you do not see an indication for touchdown as Desmond Southward reaches the end zone. Oh, did one official in the middle of the field? Maybe, but the sideline official right there did not indicate touchdown. So now, punt formation time for the Minutemen. Coulter, Johnson, Ray Guy Award watch list. On it to putt it. Good leverage into this kick, but it's fairly short and it sails out of bounds. Wisconsin will get good field position to start their next offensive possession. 7.47 to go, first quarter. Badgers on top of the Minutemen. Welcome back. Here's some of the keys plays from this first drive. You see James White right here does a great job of finding the hole, cutting back, and, and winning that foot race down the field. 47-yard run sets up the play-action pass again to James White out of the backfield. That's a mismatch right there. He does a good job of tucking that ball. Again, getting downfield. They're here. 
University of Massachusetts does not know, do I cover the running backs? Do I cover the receivers? Joel Stabby walks in untouched, followed by this here. Just a bad decision, short-armed a little bit by Stabby. Just comes up a little bit short there to Devin Brown. But the Wisconsin offense right now doing a good job of moving downfield. They need to get Stabby back, throwing the ball, get him some more confidence. Melvin Gordon picking his way across the 40 to the building four yard line on a gain of four. Devin Brown, the safety, who made an interception that uh, you just showed a moment ago, made the tackle there. Uh, this is what I really like about this Wisconsin offense. They have two very, very capable running backs that can come out of the backfield, so they're not just relying on one guy to, to carry the load and, and have 30, 35 carries a game. They're going to be able to split it up between James White and Melvin Gordon, as we're seeing here. They got a freshman they're excited about, Corey Clement. We'll see him a little bit later on today, too. Second down and five. Gordon Bigel. Into UMass territory inside the 45-yard line. 12-yard gain. Jovan Santos knocks on the tackle for the Minutemen. And this is what I love about, about this time of year. You can, from even from up here, you can hear those pads popping, offensive linemen pulling around, running backs running downfield. This is traditional Big Ten football. And not only that, but this is great Wisconsin football right now. Showing you that power game. Kenzel Doe in motion. They fake that reverse belly play straight ahead and this time the Minutemen having none of it gain of just a yard We're gonna work out these backs Gordon and white don't forget about that But uh, the reason Stavi won the quarterback job was the fact that he can get the ball He can spread the ball downfield a little bit deeper in the passing game And that's something that although they don't have a plethora of wide receiving talent here. They do have an All-America candidate in Jared Abraderis, number four, at the bottom of your screen. There's the play selection. We expect it to be top-heavy toward the run today, probably the first couple of weeks of the season, but uh, they'll get more and more into a passing game. Right through the hands of Abraderis, the aforementioned. Abraderis a little slow to get up, and matter of fact, not getting up. Coverage provided by Randall Jett. So Abraderis, some concern there. The lead receiver for the Wisconsin Badgers down at the moment with six minutes straight up to go in the first. Jared Abraderis coming off under his own power. He got sandwiched between a couple of defenders, Randall Jett and Jovan Santos Knox. Watch it here, John. Yeah, he just, you know, th there's nothing uh, malicious there. They just collided, and I think Ever Everdaris just got his hand stuck in between his own pads and uh, uh, and the pads of the defender and got it jammed up. You never want to see that early on in the season, especially with what they're trying to accomplish in that receiving game for Wisconsin. There's a look at his all-purpose uh, marks. And again, he was one of the best receivers in the Big Ten in an offense that was not a passing offense last year. They did not have a lot of success through the air. No, if you take those numbers in context with context with what they've done, those are very impressive numbers. Third down and nine. Stavi. Good protection. Got the first down. First down to Jeff Duckworth at the 33-yard line of UMass. Duckworth did a good job of driving into his defender, coming back and, and, and making a play with a little bit of pressure on him. Duckworth missed seven days of the fall camp due to injury. He had a key catch in that uh, Big Ten championship game against Nebraska last December. First and ten for Wisconsin. Humble snap. Stabby gets it back. You know, a couple of times, and they showed it there, John, they've been running some motion behind the play, and so far they haven't gone to the reverse, but they've shown the look. No, and a lot of times what you're going to see is they're going to run some of those fake reverses, uh, uh, and, and they're going to show some things that they do in their offense, not necessarily for today, but to make whoever they're going to play next week or the week after work on that. Second and ten. Pedersen was the tight end in motion a moment ago. This is Gordon. First down. 22 yard line of UMass. Kareem Bailey Smith, the safety on the tackle. 
Well, I tell you what, they just have some monster holes right now. And, and all this is is just running straight down here. You can see the, 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 the left guard there, Ryan Groy, pulls around, clears out the hole, and all they have to do is make one cut, and, and they're into that linebacker uh, area. Ryan Groy, 6'5", 317. My goodness, he showed some good feet there to move into the hole and clear it away. First down, they mark it to the 22 of UMass. Gordon, trying to follow his blocking. Gain of about five to Chicago for an update with Dave Repson. Thank you, Wayne. Ohio State rolling. Braxton Miller's first pass of the year goes to Devin Smith. 47 yards for a touchdown. Just threw another one. They've gone for two twice. They're up 16 to nothing. So the Buckeyes cranking it up early. Second-ranked team in the nation. With that from last season. Undefeated Ohio State last season. Second down. White back in there. Slipped for a moment. And his knee touched down. He may have lost a yard there. It's a third down coming up for Wisconsin. And this is one of those downs where I'm, I'm really curious to see what, what they're going to end up doing. They're in the red zone. Uh, you know, things are a little bit tight in that defensive backfield. You know, the, there's just not as much space on the field. I want to see, are they confident enough in their pass game to go ahead and take a shot, try and get a first down, or are they going to hand it off again in this third and four, third and five situation? Got the straight eye formation. Stoppy under center. Frederick in motion, Stabby to the air. Little swing pass to the fullback. J.J. Watt's brother, Derek Watt, a sophomore from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and a bursting goal for Wisconsin at the five. Well, Derek does a great job of just slipping out in the flat. They don't have anybody on him. Takes that ball. Sometimes when you're that wide open, it's awful hard to catch that ball. And, and Derek does a good job of looking that ball in and getting upfield, getting that first down. You know what might be the hardest thing, John, is that pass is coming to you and you're running away from it, basically, on that little swing pass. That's not as easy to do as he made it look right there. First and goal. Gordon. Tough sledding as he gets inside the five yard line. UMass got uh, Justin Anderson to the football that time. Well, this UMass defense right now, they're doing everything they possibly can to battle those big offensive linemen that Wisconsin has. They're just right, they're just a little bit undersized, getting pushed around. They're gonna have to start either shooting the gaps a little bit more or or, or trying to get some blitzes in there, not, not only pass blitzes, but run blitzes to stop that run. Second down. White up immediately on the play. Joe Colton made the hit. Good play as he filled in from the secondary. And now it's third down and goal to go the four. These are, I, I asked Coach Anderson yesterday, oh, what are some of the situations that you, you, you'd like to see in this game? And, and we had talked about, yeah, short yardage, we want to see what they're going to do, but also goal line, to get inside that five-yard line. These are things you can't simulate in practice. Until, you know, when you get in the game and the bullets are free, let's, let's go ahead and see what's going what's to happen with this offense. Stop it. Lots of time. Takes it himself. Comes up short. Stanley Andre, the inside linebacker over to make the hit for UMass, and the field goal unit comes on. How was the coverage? I would have really liked to have seen Joel Stave tuck that ball just a second or two sooner. You see right now that he's got the room. Everybody's back. Go ahead and take off running. Just doesn't have the foot speed to outrun anybody right now. Kyle French for the 21-yard field goal attempt. James McGuire, the deep snapper. And the kick is right down the boulevard. So Wisconsin increases its first quarter lead to 10-0 over UMass. And you see Gary Anderson there shake his head a little bit. It's frustrating when you get inside that red zone and you only come away with three points. It may not affect them right now, but in some of these games down the line, you're going to have to be very effective once you get inside the 20. 
once you get inside the 10, once you get inside the 5, you have to be automatic. You need to get touchdowns out of that, not field goals. Coming up later today at 3.30, it's the Wolverines home opener against Central Michigan, or you'll see Iowa host Northern Illinois. And then in prime time, Nebraska and Wyoming. Today and tonight on BTN and BTN to go. Wayne Larrabee, John Jansen. It is a warm, partly sunny day here in Madison. We've had some warm weather this weekend. It has been a one hot weekend in Madison. Temperatures in the 90s yesterday and a chance to walk around campus. And I'll tell you what, just walking was a workout. <laughs> Trey Dudley Giles back deep. Kyle French on the kickoff for the Badgers. From a yard deep. Out across the 25. Good decisive run back by Trey Dudley Giles. And UMass gets it first down. Well, I like how uh, Dudley Childs hits that hole really hard. He, he did a great job of just tucking that ball. He knew where the ball, the, the, the blocking was going to be set up, put his head down, and ran right up into that wedge. Here's what you're talking about. Yeah, he just he hits that hole 100 miles an hour. And I, I tell you what, if he doesn't get tripped up there, makes one cut, you're, you're looking at a whole different play. And, and, and that aggressiveness hitting that hole is what's going to set that up sometime for him. UMass clustering three receivers right at the bottom of your screen. The pistol look with the running back behind the quarterback in the shotgun. This is Stacy Bedell. Nice hole there. And a gain of about five yards. First quarter winds to a close for Gary Anderson and company. Mixed bag. They had some success for sure, especially on that opening drive of 79 yards to a touchdown. They've had some setbacks as well. But at the end of one, Wisconsin leads UMass by the score of 10 to nothing. Ever the workout artist, this is my partner, John Jansen. This is how he made his way from the media parking here at Camp Randall Stadium, Lake Mendota. Futuristic flyboard. The only thing that. I could think of when I was on that was, man, I'd love to see Wayne do this, too. <laughs> Not on your life. How about that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That looks like fun. <laughs> First down, UMass, as we get there. Second down, UMass, as we get the second quarter underway. And Stacy Bedell, tough yards, hard to come by against this Wisconsin defense. Pat Muldoon, the uh, defensive end, made the stop for the Badgers. Third down and short. You know, Pat Muldoon, you know, I've seen him today. He's lined up with his hand in the dirt. He's lined up standing up outside. This is a huge departure for what they've done before. They've always been a hand in the dirt type of guys. Now having to move around and, and, and come from that stand-up position, big transition for him. And timeout called on the field. UMass wants to talk it over, so we will step away as well. Dave Aranda's defense. Maybe showed the Minutemen something they weren't expecting at that moment. Third and one for UMass when we come back. Here he is, number 44, Chris Borland, U.S. Marine Corps, leader of the game, forced a fumble earlier today. 14 forced fumbles in his career. My goodness. Well, I remember when he came here as a freshman, John, they were so excited about this kid and what he brought to the party. And they still are, and, and, and the fans and everybody's excited to watch him play. When he puts on those pads and that helmet, he is your true, your typical football player, just down and dirty, ready to get after him. Short yardage situation, third and one. Did Weggs didn't get enough for the first down? It appears the way the linesman is spotting the ball, he did. And it is a first down. Charlie Molner, you know, he was talking about his program, and this is his second year. Within five years, he wants his program to be playing for a MAC championship with 50% of its starters hailing from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's uh, his goal for this program. And this is only their second year on this level of football. Football Bowl All -star subdivision. Offense, number 89. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. They've had a couple of those now. That one on the tight end. Derek Beck. Well, you talk about Charlie Moeller and, and building this program. He definitely has a plan in place. And 
and moving from you know to to the new FCS and FBS series they're allowed more scholarships they're allowed to have more coaches they're allowed to have get, you know players there in the offseason it changes the whole way that they could build that program webs in incomplete trying to hit the wide receiver Shakur Naismith on a uh, comebacker and it's Going to be second down and 15 for UMass. Well, the other thing is they play their home games now at Gillette Stadium, home of the New England Patriots, which is almost an hour off of campus or thereabouts. Uh, they're going to play a split schedule when their stadium uh, on their campus is uh, redesigned a bit. That'll start next year. Greg's in on the run. Tough throw there between defenders. Yeah, Trying to get it downfield to Ricardo Miller, the transfer from Michigan, the tight end. Wegsen uh, got away with one there. He threw that ball across his body into coverage uh, and, and was able to, to, to luckily let that ball hit the ground. That, uh, nine times out of ten, I think that ball is going to be picked off. You know, when you're UMass and you're up against it on the road in a game like this, mistakes... In a situation like this where you're trying to do too much, John, sometimes get you buried. Well, they do. And, and you know, starting off first and 10, you get a five-yard penalty. Now you're third, you know, second and 15, third and 15. It's just when you're coming out of a hole, it's tough to make things happen. Let's see what the Badgers do here on the blitz. Wexen may be changing the play at the line now. He's got a four-wide receiver set. And a delay a game. Delay a game. Offense, number 11, five-yard penalty. It remains third down. Well, it, 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 take a look at this defense here. They're trying to make a change on offense, and all of a sudden they get lined up, and the defense moves around. Now, now, now the offense isn't sure. Well, is this play going to be good, or you know, we have the right one? Let's let's try and change the play again. That's where you end up with these uh, either offsides or delay of game penalties. Third down. Blitz. Bedell, and why not? In that situation. Discretion, the better part of Valor, and Bedell was a tackle or two away from maybe breaking that one open. Connor O'Neill, a linebacker, brought him down near the 40. Nice game, but it's fourth down and nine for UMass. And UMass does, needs to do a better job on first down of gaining yeah. three or four yards so they can get into that second, seven, second, and five and make those second and third downs convertible. If, if, if they're in third and 15 or third and 20 all the time, it, 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 especially against Wisconsin, it is tough to come out of that, that situation. Coulter, Johnson, shanked his first punt. Here's his second. Height into this floater. Fair catch signal made by Kenzel Doe, and he secures outside the numbers near the 25-yard line of Wisconsin. Early going, second quarter in Madison. Gary Anderson's Badgers on top, 10-0. Welcome back to Wisconsin, where right now the Badgers lead UMass 10-0. Take a look at, at this defensive situation right here. One of the things that Dave Aranda, the defensive coordinator, wants to do is to create that pre-stab con confusion. Right now, you've got everybody on this side of the ball. In just a moment, you're going to see they're going to transfer and move right here. Everybody gets back to that three-down lineman, two-linebacker position. If we can freeze it right there, you see you've got one, two, three. And... And you can see right now, that right there is what causes that delay of game penalty. James White on first down for the Badgers. Gain of three to the 27-yard line. There's Dave Aranda. Show you a lot of different looks. Spent some time with Dom Capers, the defensive coordinator of the Green Bay Packers. Dave was very excited about that day he spent in Green Bay right after he got the job as Wisconsin's defensive coordinator. He uh, bases a lot of his principles off of what Dom Capers does. And uh, Coach Capers has had uh, a little bit of success doing that in the NFL, so uh, I think it's a, probably a good one to model yourself after. Everett Darris at the top of your screen. And they go white. Nice hole up the middle. And he's got a first down to the 35-yard line. I really want to see Wisconsin put something together on this drive. They started off that first drive very methodically, moved down the field, followed with an interception, followed with another good drive that, that, that stalled inside the red zone. Here you see uh, James White does a good job of getting his shoulders squared up to the line of scrimmage and hitting that hole, getting downfield, picking up that first down. Let's see them put this drive together. That's what the running game does for you. Wins you that time of possession stat more often than not. They fake the reverse to Doe. Going deep. Abra Deris. And a 
it's broken up incomplete. That ball hung up for just a moment, and Randall Jett got up into the air and knocked it away. That's a shame because Aberdeer has had two steps on him. You can see right here, he's got him beat, and that ball just hangs up enough and allows Randall Jett to recover, make a play on the ball. Aberdeer does a great job of running past him, giving himself a chance. Yep. Aberdeer is not bad for a former walk-on quarterback. <laughs> no, <laughs> Think no. about this. Second down and ten. The outside, here comes James White. Into UMass territory, down near the 40-yard line of the Minutemen. Let's go back to Chicago for an update and Dave Bretson. All right, Wayne, so the Badgers are rolling, as is Ohio State. No problems at all with Buffalo. Jordan Hall marking on the longest run of his career, 49-yarder. Buckeyes have gone for two twice. They're on top 23 to nothing over the Bulls. Wayne. Thank you, Dave. Right here, 10 nothing, Wisconsin. Opening four minutes of play in the second quarter. Big run of 24 yards by White. Puts the Badgers in enemy territory. And again, they show that reverse and work the belly play. Not much there that time. No, and that's the first time I've seen that UMass D line get some penetration yeah. uh, and, 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 and really get in the backfield. Now watch this. That's exactly what you're seeing. Penetration there, and then Gordon is stacked up by his own blocker. Ran right in up the back of Ryan Groy, loss of two. Watt is the pullback. Gordon. Oh, good cut there. He was just tripped up barely by Randall Jett. Jett got just enough of him. As it is, gained of about six yards, maybe seven. Well, they're doing a tremendous job of reading this play. Ryan Groy, you can see right there again, pulling around. This time he pulls all the way around, seals off that edge, and if, if Melvin Gordon can just get outside or, or just not get tripped up there, they're they're dancing in the end zone right now. Bright sunshine now. Things are starting to heat up in more ways than one here at Camp Randall Stadium. Melvin Gordon averaged 10 yards a carry last year. Oh, How do you keep him off the field? Well, you had Monty Ball. Here comes Gordon. Barreling his way inside the 25 to the 24-yard line of Massachusetts. And just on those two plays, you see why these Wisconsin running backs are so dangerous. They can get outside. They can also run straight downhill. Force that hole. Force that presence. Force those linebackers to come up and then bump it outside and go. Looking in, you're wondering what's different at Wisconsin. And you've only seen an offensive series or two. Not a whole lot. They're still running the football the way they always have. Very effectively. First and ten. Stabby. Pedersen broken up incomplete. Jacob Pedersen well covered. Colton was there. And this is a good time for... Uh, offense coordinator Andy Ludwig to keep putting that pressure on Stavi. Make him make those throws. Right now, he's just been a little bit inaccurate downfield. He throws that ball behind Pedersen there. If he can just... The margin of error is so slim here. You need to put that ball either front number, back number, between the numbers. You can't keep throwing it behind guys or hanging it up in the air. Bad things are going to happen. White is the tailback. No in motion. Here comes White. Pulled back by Daniel Maines. Gain of a couple. So now third down for Wisconsin. Third and about eight. When we talk about being on schedule, we mentioned it for UMass. Here is the same thing with Wisconsin. You throw an incompletion on first down, then it's second and ten. You only get two or three yards on second down. Now you're sitting at third and seven. It limits that playbook a little bit, especially when you get nearer the end zone and, and things get tight. Badgers on a third down call. Stop. Nice protection. To go in the end zone, and the pass carried out of bounds. Took him a little bit out of bounds. Pretty good coverage provided once again 
in the UMass secondary. This time by Antoine Tharp. Well, that's a tough throw to make, you know, uh, uh, trying to get to that back corner of the end zone. It's it, it, it's hard to float that ball up with the timing, with the touch. Yeah, that fade is not an easy throw. You're exactly right. This will be a 40-yard field goal attempt for Kyle French. He had some inconsistency a season ago. They worked hard to uh, correct some things during the uh, spring drills and fall camp. It got its way, and it is no good. So Wisconsin, despite dominating time of possession and moving the football in the second quarter, has just a 10-0 lead over UMass. This October, BTN's award-winning original series, It's Back. It's the show with an unprecedented look inside the Big Ten season. The Journey, Big Ten Football 2013, presented by Best Buy, premieres October 9th on BTN. We saw Memorial Union Terrace, there's Lake Mendota. Busy place as uh, students head back into Madison. School doesn't start till Tuesday, Big John. You got your uh, bookcase all filled. And class card written out yeah I did my time being a 12th year senior you probably don't have a class before 11 o'clock in the morning they're all online <laughs> don't you like it you love those gain of about three yards here for UMass as Stacy Bedell gets the call now there's a good start for UMass right there picking up three yards on first down now they're looking at second and seven it leaves the options wide open for them Tajay Sharp is the wide receiver at the top of your screen Leading returning receiver. They go the other way. And this is Naismith. Then uh, he tries to stay in bound and is angled out of bounds close to the first down near the 31. Let's get back to Chicago. Dave Revson for an update. All right, Wayne, thanks. Illinois has gone ahead of Southern Illinois. Nate Shieldhouse to Josh Ferguson. And Ferguson does the rest. Some nifty moves. 53 yards for the touchdown. Alana now on top of the Salukis. 10 7 in Champaign. Wayne. Here in Madison. Thank you, Dave. Six in the Big Ten in defense fighting a line. I look even better than that. Meanwhile, UMass able to get the tight end to the outside. Ricardo Miller, he is a fifth year senior transfer from Michigan. Lined up at wide out tight end for the Wolverines in his career. And he's got a first down for UMass. Yeah, they've got a couple of transfers. Uh, one from Michigan there with Ricardo Miller and uh, David Osei from uh, Rutgers uh, came over for his fifth year uh, at, the, at the right tackle position. And Justin Anderson from Maryland at defensive end. Wegs in. Nice looking throw going for Sharp and the pass barely overthrown. Double coverage downfield for the Wisconsin Badgers. Darius Hillary in pursuit along with Mike Caputo. That's just the opposite of what uh, what happened with Joel Stavi in that last uh, possession that Wisconsin had uh, right there. Michael Wegson just didn't put enough under that ball. He threw that one uh, too much of a rope uh, and, and just ended up th overthrowing his receiver a little bit too much. But again, UMass wants to run a spread offense, and they've spread out the field with three receivers now to the outside and got a couple of backs in the shotgun. And they're running. Bedell. Gets what he can, barely into Wisconsin territory, to the 49 on a gain of three. Kelly sifting over to make a hit for Wisconsin, along with Derek Landish in that linebacking core. I think Dave Aranda mentioned to us, he has a lot of experience in that defensive front seven, and that has certainly helped in the transition to this new type of defense, this 3-4 defense being run by the defensive coordinator here at Madison this year. So it's third down for UMass, third and seven. Wegs in under a blitz, good protection over the middle. That sharp juggled for a moment, latches on for a first down to the 36-yard line of Wisconsin. Tajay Sharp, a sophomore from Piscataway, New Jersey. Well, you can see the running back right here picks up Borland, knocks him down, allows the quarterback enough time to hit that quick slant. 
and pick up that first down. Right there is great job, great job of communication between that offensive line and a running back of getting that blitz picked up, allowing the quarterback, Michael Wegson, to get that ball out. So first down for the Minutemen. Wegson kind of went with a muddle huddle here, calling the play at the line, and they checked with the sidelines oftentimes to see if they want to change a play before the snap. They go to Bedell this time, and he's getting a workout here today. That's Chris Borland, the All-American linebacker, ranging up to make the hit pickup of one. But Bedell is showing his versatility uh, of being able to not only you know, get that ball downfield and, and run with the ball, but in pass protection. So many times, especially in the spread offense, you got to have a running back that can stick his nose in there, know who to block, and actually get it done. Play being signaled in from the sidelines. Second down. Bedell is in his first game since injuring, being injured and missing the rest of last season. Suffered that injury in a game at Indiana. Wags in. And the tight end latches on. That's... Ricardo Miller took an immediate hit, but held on. Gain of about five yards, maybe six, and it's third down for UMass. Good job of moving that ball down, getting into a reasonable third and, and medium situation. UMass may be catching a rhythm here. Wegs in, tried to force that one in, knocked away, and Tennifer Naismith. Danielle Jean may have gotten a piece of it. They're just trying to just get to that first down marker. Quarterback takes a little bit of a hit there. Interesting call here going with the, uh, uh, with the field goal. They're kind of in that four down territory, but they have one of the best kickers in college football. Blake Lucas last year, 7 of 8 in the field goal department, but did not attempt a field goal of over 40 yards. This one will be a 47-yard field goal attempt. And timeout called on the field. Their second timeout. So the Minutemen take another timeout. 3.55 to go in this first half. UMass hanging tough. In Madison, Gary Anderson's opening day. Only 10 nothing here in the second quarter in Wisconsin. And the reason it's only 10 points right now is a couple of miscues that Wisconsin has had. Here, Joel Stavi not understanding, not seeing that, that safety. Devin Browns is hitting in the center there. Throws the ball, interception. And here, just a, a, they move the ball and they miss that field goal. They've, they've done a great job of moving the ball up and down the field, but they have not been able to capitalize on great opportunities. Blake Lucas for a field goal of 47 yards to put the Minutemen on the board. No good. He has shown range up to 50 yards, according to Charlie Molnar, in camp this summer, but... He did not attempt a field goal over 40 yards last year. And he comes up short and to the left on that one. So it's still 10-0 Wisconsin. This is one of those games where Wisconsin needs to take control. They're clearly in control, moving the ball up and down the field, but they have to be able to capitalize, get the ball in the end zone, not settle for three points, and not allow UMass to get in position to make a couple of plays down the field. They get motion from Pedersen, the tight end. Quick toss to Pedersen. And he dropped it. Well, there'll be some coaching points uh, from this tape this week. There's no doubt about that. There will, and this is, uh, you know, these are very typical first game situations where, you know, you have a center quarterback exchange. You know, your quarterback doesn't necessarily see the whole field, throws an interception uh, in the middle of the field. You have some drop balls. Those things can be ironed out. Everybody's anxious, aren't they? Opening day. Better sit again in motion, straight eyes. Second and ten. Gordon.
John Jansen, you said take control. That's 70 yards worth of control. They do, and you see Ryan Groy again. We talk about them pulling that left guard, getting it outside, and from here on out, it's a foot race that you know Melvin Gordon isn't going to lose. Fifth career touchdown run for Melvin Gordon. Kyle French for the point after. And the kick is good. Well, let's take another look at Melvin Gordon's run here. And you see, as this play starts to develop, you're going to watch that left guard. He's going to pull around and seal off that edge. And as that play runs, you'll see it. He comes around, reads it, needs to know he needs to get outside. And then right here, you're going to see Derek Watt do a great job of blocking out. The guard, Groy, has it sealed off in there. And from then on out, it's, it's untouched by human hands. <laughs> Melvin Gordon does a great job of just hitting that hole and making it happen. Mm -hmm. That'll get you a 10-yard plus average, won't it? <laughs> no question. And th those are the explosive plays that yeah. Wisconsin needs. And and, and a, we, we talked early on about setting up for, for the, uh, the play-action pass. When you have runs like that and your linebackers and the safeties feel the need to come up and support that run so they can prevent those big plays, now you're going to see... Uh, Stavi have the opportunity to get downfield to some open receivers. There's a look at the work so far by Melvin Gordon. And now, you know, all, all afternoon, Wisconsin's been ahead 10 nothing. People say, well, UMass hanging tough. And, and you know, now 17 nothing is a little bit for the Wisconsin people anyway. I'm sure they're saying that's a little more like it. But UMass, that belies how they've hung tough in this game throughout the first half. Trey Dudley Giles. Still on his feet. Penalty marker down. Giles goes down near the 40-yard line. Leo Musso in on the tackle for the Badgers. Let's see what the flag's all about. That was thrown back in the middle of the field. Our referee, Todd Gearlings. Holding. Return team, number 34. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul first down oh, that's so unfortunate that it happened especially behind the play it was a uh, a block that didn't even need to happen mm -hmm. it was so far away and then to take away that great return that great field position it's unfortunate for UMass so UMass gets it at the 20 yard line in its own territory 17 nothing Wisconsin on a four yard touchdown run by Joel Stavi and a 70-yard run by Melvin Gordon. It's a right. it's a down UMass. Hold on, I can't run. Penalty marker thrown in the middle of the line, maybe in the area of holding. Gain of about three for Stacy Bedell. UMass needs to be careful not to get sloppy, not to get careless, trying to make something happen and do something they're not comfortable doing. Yeah, you're under four minutes to go in the half. Here's Todd. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense for 96. 15-yard penalty. An autumn first down. Against Wisconsin. Let's see. Bo Allen inside there. Oh, there it is right there. 96. His hand on that face mask. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You know, sometimes it, in, in the middle there, you, your hands just get a little bit uh, away from you, and you're unaware of where they may be. I understand. <laughs> I'm with you, big guy. <laughs> Spoken like an All-America offensive tackle. Who's had his hands in the, <laughs> somebody's face on occasion? <laughs> I've been caught uh, with my hand in the cookie jar, yes. per se. <laughs> Caputo makes the tackle there. Second down, gain of two. Bo Allen, one of the keys up front, according to Dave Aranda. Your nose tackle, you run a 3-4 defense, your nose tackle's a key member of that team. He's got to be good. They empty the shotgun. 
blitz coming. Wegsen had to throw that in a hurry. He was uh, being blitzed on a cleared shot by Landish. BTN goes where you want, when you want it, with BTN to go, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Watch every football game on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. BTN to go is now available to all major subscribers who receive BTN through their cable, satellite, or participating video providers. To learn more, visit btntogo.com. Also available in the App Store and on Google Play. Third down, UMass. Good protection for Wegson. Overshot Miller, who was pretty well covered by Landish. Well, you can see Wisconsin starting to put a little bit more pressure on Wegson. Starting to get home with some of those blitzes. Yeah, you can see here just a spin move on the outside there. Does a great job of Shelton putting pressure on that quarterback. It's tough when you're sitting back there, you know, seven, eight yards deep, and you're not sure if you're going to be picked up. You're a very vulnerable when you let go of that ball, and that quarterback uh, needs to know he's got the confidence to stand in there and deliver strikes. Twin safeties back deep. And another shank. And Wisconsin's going to get good field position. Coulter Johnson who has shanked two of his three punts, and as I mentioned, he's one of the better punters in the country. I'm the, all, the uh, leading punter in the back a year ago and a Ray Guy Award list punter this season. So a shaky day for him, and Wisconsin gets it at the 45-yard line of UMass. You get a chance to look at, uh, at the punt return from last year. This is against Utah State. Enzel Doe on the return, 82 yards in a tight battle. The Badgers are treading in the half, 14 to three in that ball game, but on to win it, 16 to 14. And Gary Anderson not very happy that day. He was the head coach of Utah State. Gain of a yard there for James White, maybe two. Well, you know, and, and it's the interesting story is that this spring. Gary Anderson standing there running the spring drills, and he sees number three go by, and one of the players says to him, you should recognize that guy running by you. And then Anderson, Gary says, oh, that's when I realized that's who that was. Yeah. He got us last year. He said. That's when you know your players are starting to get real comfortable with you. Yeah. Second and eight. Ah, a little false start there on the left side of the line. Looked like maybe the tight end. False start. Offense. Number 85. Five-yard penalty. Brian Wozniak, the guilty party. Well, Wisconsin got the ball with 2.07 left on the other side of the 50, and, and I really would have liked to have seen a little bit more efficiency of moving down. It's been a great opportunity for them to, to get that hurry-up offense going, try and get in the end zone before, uh, before halftime. Second down. Good decisive throw right there, and he threads the needle to Jacob Pedersen. That time put the ball right on the four and the eight on Pedersen's jersey. Back into uh, inside the 45 of UMass, leaving a third down and nine. And a timeout taken by Wisconsin. Badgers leading 17-0 was 10-0 with just under four minutes to go in the game in the first half. And then uh, Melvin Gordon on a 70-yard touchdown run. And the Badgers have their 17-point margin as we near halftime. Well, you, you see that happen so many times, Wayne, where, uh, you know, it's a little bit early in the game right now, but you, you, you keep pounding that ball away, and those, those five, six, seven-yard runs, so all of a sudden they turn into 10, 12, 13-yard runs, and, and you get a chance to, to pop one out. And, uh, I'm sure we'll get a chance to see some more of that here in the second half. Start wearing that defensive line down, making those running, I mean, I'm sorry, those linebackers defensive backs guess what's going on Melvin Gordon take a look at some of his work today good tough run on tackle there and Gordon, this is tripped up just barely he had a big run coming there watch him again got the good seal blocks off the right side of the line and went 70 yards took it to the house Stavi coming back for it. diving attempt made in the pass in and out of the hands of Abradaris Working hard under the coverage of Trey Dudley Giles. 
Well, and that, uh, that's just a disappointing end to a disappointing series right there. That, uh, that really should have been a first down catch for him. But not much production on that on that series. Those three Myers, plays the there. Managers. They got the ball. They had a penalty. They got pushed back. They were able to get a couple of yards. But just you know, with two minutes left to go in the half, I really expected them to, to be able to move the ball down and put uh, some more points on the board before we got to halftime. Meyer hangs it up high. Catch made near the 15-yard line of UMass. The Minutemen get it back. 54 seconds left to go in this first half. So as we've mentioned, Gary Anderson, kind of a mixed bag. There have been some good things that have happened. Obviously, his team's leading 17-0, but they've had their problems, as you've documented, John. And Well, they have, and, and you know, but the, the, the nice thing about it is that they're not major flaws. You know, a little bit of accuracy for the quarterback, uh, you know, a little bit of discipline in terms of the penalties, but it's just being able to finish those drives and, and, and get that ball in the end zone, whether it's on a three or four yard line or if you're at the 20, you got to be able to put points on the board every drive. UMass does have a timeout left in this first half, but it looks to me like they're just going to try to get out of here down no more than 17 nothing. One of the things I really like about Gary Anderson is that the fact that and, and his wristband says that their players make plays and players win games. He is, uh, uh, in my opinion, a, a player's coach in that. I mean, he coaches from Sunday to Friday. And then on Saturday, he's there to support and coach and do what he needs to do. But it's the player's show. He lets them go out there and, and do what they do. Uh, and it's all about them. Beck gets a block on the flank, but not a lot of yardage as uh, the Badgers flow quickly to the football led by Desmond Southward. Their outstanding safety. Time winding down, and that should about do it. They could get a snap off if they want, but I don't believe they want to. So despite some turnovers and some miscues, Wisconsin prevailing 17-0 at halftime at the outset of the Gary Anderson era in Madison. We'll be heading back to Chicago for our halftime report with Dave Repson coming up. 17-0 Badgers at the break. Brought to you by Auto Owners Insurance. Protect what matters most with an Auto Owners Insurance independent agent. Find yours at AutoOwnersInsurance.com. And by John Deere. The off-road just got roomier. The new Gator XUV 825i S4. Now with seating for four. Venerable Bascom Hall here on the campus of Wisconsin. The Badgers leading at halftime 17-0 over the Minutemen of UMass. Along with John Jansen, Wayne Larrabee, great to have you with us on this warm holiday weekend in the state capital of Wisconsin. Quick and Loans quarterback comparison through the air. They both struggled somewhat, but uh, Joel Stavi, of course, has a touchdown run to his credit. Well, he does, and, uh, and he's also got that interception to his credit, and, and, and I would really like to see as the second half starts off them give the opportunity for Stavi to be able to get the ball downfield, uh, make a couple of high com hyper completion percentage passes, um, and then take some shots. Uh, they should be able to get a rhythm going in this game. Kyle French kicking it away. Trey Dudley Giles from the four. Giles ridden down across the 25-yard line. I agree with you, John. I like the way that guy returns kicks. He is decisive. Yeah, the, yeah you probably remember this name, uh, Tim Dwight, mm -hmm. uh, for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Used to be one of the hardest-running players I've ever seen, and, and he would take a ball and just jam it right up in there, and, uh, and he does the same exact thing uh, of, of being able to get in there and, and make that coverage team make a decision right away because you're running that hard so UMass down 17 nothing as we start the third quarter first down from there 26 the fake to Bedell Wedson under pressure now pass a bit too high for Bedell in the flat they brought late pressure on that play 
did the Badgers. Connor O'Neill, the linebacker, shook loose. Great job by that young secondary to be able to hold off on that protection uh, and, and allow that late developing pressure to happen. Second and ten. Now Bedell. And he just pile drives out to the 29. A gain of three, leaving third and seven. Mid portion of that Wisconsin defense was there. And coming in from the secondary to supplement things, Michael Caputo. Third down. Minutemen, just three of seven on third down conversions in the first half. Pass incomplete. Intended for Tajay Sharp. Well overthrown. And it's fourth down, UMass. One, two, three, and out. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, a, obviously a deep play, long developing play, and it's just, you know, uh, uh, Wegsen didn't have enough time to be comfortable in the pocket. He ended up getting hit at the very end of that play. If he has just one more second to be able to step up, make that throw, uh, I, you know, that, that could have been a completion for them. Coulter Johnson, three punts, just a 23-yard average. He shanked two of them in the first half. Kenzel Doe ranging up under this one is collared down at the 35-yard line. Kareem Bailey-Smith on the tackle, and we've got a timeout. It's a warm afternoon in Madison. The Badgers on offense for the first time in the third quarter. Would you come back? We've been talking about a new coaching regime here, a new era. Well, there's a new locker room here in Madison as well. And take a look at this spacious home of Wisconsin football. Kind of like that little ping pong table. Get yourself a sandwich. Got big locker rooms. Take care of all your stuff in there. <laughs> I want to go hang out in that now. Yeah. Big, big Bo Allen. He's got plenty of room in that locker. First down, Wisconsin's uh, their first possession of the second half offensively. Stabby going over the top. Abra Darius, he's got it. Touchdown. <laughs> 65 yards. Now that's the way you shake off. A shaky first half. No question. And that's exactly what we talked about. What we wanted to see Stavi do is to be able to come out, air out that ball, be an accurate passer downfield, and he, and then he hit Jared Aberderis in stride, put it right on, right where he needed to be. Great way to come out and make a statement here in the second half. Kyle French. With the point after, and he slips it inside the left upright. Jared Abraderis reaching the board here in the early going of the second half. Beautiful 65 yard rainbow from Joel Stubby. Wayne Larrabee, John Jansen, big plays for Wisconsin have keyed the Badgers to a 24 0 lead early going third quarter. French with the kickoff. At the goal line. Trey Dudley Giles gets it out across the 25-yard line. Let's go back to the previous play. Here's what Joel Stavi sees right now. As you can see, Aberderis is, is making his move, trying to get to the center of the field, but they threaten this zone. They've got receivers in there that threaten that zone, so the safety has to come up. The corner's a little bit late in getting over, and they don't have that protection in the middle of the field. And exactly why Joel Stavi won this job was his ability to stretch the field, make plays downfield. Right there, you see a perfect strike to, to uh, Aberderis and a and a huge play coming out of halftime for him. Two big 
offensive plays. Gordon's 70-yard touchdown run of the first half. Abradaris here in the third quarter. Penalty marker down as changing direction is Stacy Bedell, and he gets very little out of that, but again, flags down. Ethan Armstrong, the linebacker, responding. Holding. Offense. Number 69. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, they get too much too much penetration up front, and, and, and you, you watch the right tackle here. Uh, I'm sorry, the right guard, Tyrell Smith. Anytime that running back changes directions and you have your hand on the back side mm -hmm. of a guy's jersey, it, it, you know, you're, you're just inviting a flag. Whether you have a hold of them or not, it, it's position of the hands that will get that called on you every time. First and 20. incomplete they were trying to get it over to sharp and he collided in the secondary with Michael Caputo and could not get to the spot where uh, the quarterback Mike Wegson was throwing the football you know what's concerning is that there are wide receivers open and that's on the other side of that play folks that's on the opposite side of the field where that happened Aren't receivers always open? <laughs> they think they are. They'll tell you they are. And, uh, and you can see right there, he, he felt that he was pretty wide open. Yeah, he did. Second down and 20. Wexen just uh, emails that one over to Charlie Molner on the sidelines. And now it's third and long. Well, UMass, at the end of the first half there, they seemed like they had a little bit of a rhythm going and, and, and were able to move the ball uh, somewhat on this Wisconsin defense. Right now, uh, it, it, it feels like they're just really out of sync. They're, you know, they're not getting to the line of scrimmage with the same efficiency. They're not getting the plays called. They're not completing passes. It, it just, right now, they seem very out of sync. Third and 20. Now, delay handoff, Bedell. Just to get some room for the special teams to work. Fidel picks up about eight, nine yards there, but far short of the first down. Brendan Kelly on the stop. Boy, when you're at third and 20, uh, yeah. as an offensive coordinator, there's not a whole lot of plays in the just, playbook. You can say, uh, dial up and say, all right, this one's going to get me 21. Yeah, you got a, you got a short list there, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Coulter Johnson on a punt formation. Kenzel Doe back deep. Got twin safeties back deep now to the uh, Badgers. Johnson's had a tough day. Trying to get it to the near sidelines. Doe makes the fair catch at the 35-yard line of Wisconsin, where the Badgers will put it in play. First and 10. Big play Badgers play on the lead. Third quarter in Madison. Great day for a sale out on Lake Mendota. I imagine they're tuned in somewhat. <laughs> and then on, uh, this is yesterday at, uh, up on Bascom Hill. And another tradition here in Wisconsin will be jump around coming up between the third and fourth quarters. That guy's getting limbered up right now. <laughs> First and 10, Wisconsin. Badgers on top, 24-0. They've got a huge advantage in yardage due mainly to three explosive plays in this ballgame. Yeah, what I'd like to see on this drive now is, is it just how way they started off. Get three or four yards in the run game. Now maybe come back with a little play action, get somebody in the flat, and, and, and move that ball methodically down the field. I want to see another drive just like they had uh, to start the game. James White, the tailback. Stavi looking for Patterson, and he's got it. For a first down near the midfield marker. Nice little keep play, very safe pass. It is, and, uh, you know, Patterson is just going to come across the formation, get himself a little bit lost. 
uh, and then pop out the other side and uh, just a great job by Stavi to put that ball we, we talked about the accuracy before you know it needs to be on that that front number back number middle number whatever it is he's able to do it on that play and, and complete that pass straight eye formation back here. First and ten Badgers at their 49. This is White. Look out. There he goes. To the house. Touchdown. Fifty-one yard touchdown run, James White. Wisconsin 30 to nothing. Great job. And it's that same play that we've been talking about all day long where Groy pulls around and clears the way for White. Does a great job of staying in bounds, shaking that last defender, not getting distracted by the official on the sideline. Kyle French with the point after. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. So replay will do its job. Take a close look at it. Official review. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Trey Dudley Giles, did he get him out of bounds there or not? Oh, it's hard to see. Yeah, Indisputable just... video evidence is what you need. Well, from that angle, you, you're not going to be able to tell because uh, uh, the defender's body blocks the vision. Getting a look at the feet right here now. Hard to tell there, too. And now we just have confirmation from Todd Gerling's that the uh, play will stand. Well, I tell you, one of the most unfortunate uh, individuals is a sideline judge over there having to watch uh, uh, in slow mo. <laughs> They've got to call it live, and more often than not, they get it right. French with the extra point, it is good. So Wisconsin extends to a 31 0 lead over UMass. Well, and, and, and as we watch this play uh, over and over again, you get a chance to see if we can freeze it right there. Oh, my goodness. Our official trips over the little white line right there. And it's unfortunate that he has to. It's just bad timing I, I, right I, there. No, I think you tripped him with the telestrator. <laughs> That's what I think happened. Hey, I, trust me, the turf monster. Yeah, the turf monster's got me many a times. And, uh, the, the great thing was you see right there, he, he never lost sight of the ball. Mm -hmm. He's no. looking at him the whole time. He's a pro. <laughs> well, we do have to remind everybody at home that this, uh, this is a game. And uh, there are some funny things that happen from time to time, and uh, we'll we'll make sure that we will definitely point them out to you when they happen. This is uh, hard to believe. Gordon and White, the first tandem in a game with 100 yards apiece since 2005. Brian Calhoun and Booker Stanley. Hmm. Kyle French once again kicking it away. One sails through the end zone. First and ten coming up for the Minutemen at their 20-yard line. Well, I think that'll be a, a, a probably a story that we'll be talking about all year with this Wisconsin offense is, uh, uh, you know, James White and, and Melvin Gordon in the numbers that they'll put up as a tandem. Beg your pardon, UMass will accept at the 25-yard line on kickoffs through the end zone. Ball comes out to the 25. So it's first and 10 for UMass. Down 31-0. Mike Wegson at quarterback. Fake to Bedell. 
Wexen. Pass incomplete. Maybe some miscommunication because the receiver, Naismith, did a go route and uh, Wexen threw to the sidelines. Well behind his receiver. Oh, and you hate to wait good waste good pass protection on that. He had plenty and plenty of time. Meanwhile, on the other side of the field, Tajay Sharp motioning that he's wide open. Nay Smith in the slot at the top of your screen. Miller, the tight end in motion. Bedell going that way. Hey, the pop of the pads as Bedell is brought down across the 25-yard line, gain of about three. Chris Borland flowed to the football as he normally does from his linebacking core. Connor O'Neill also in on that tackle. Chris Borland does a great job of, of moving sideline to sideline, and especially in between the tight end box. Uh, he does a great job of filling holes, reading that play, and diagnosing it, and then attacking as soon as he makes that decision. It's a third down for UMass. Wetzin has plenty of time. Now being flushed. Penalty marker down, downfield. Wetzin goes down. Back inside the 25-yard line to get a flag thrown downfield. Warren Herring in pursuit got his man. Holding defense, number 21, 10-yard penalty. Results or replay third down. Peniel Jean, the guilty party. This is right here against Tajay Sharp. He's got him. Yeah, it's especially when he cut, tries to cut <laughs> out of that, uh, come out of that cut. You just can't pull the jersey like that. He never let go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to grab a piece, but Sharp get circle rooting. <laughs> yeah. And Peniel never let go. So the football comes out to the 39-yard line, first and 10. John, if you're UMass and you're in this situation, what are you looking to do? do you... Well, you're still looking to develop a rhythm. And, yeah. and you know, we talked to the coaches early, at, uh, uh, early in the week, and uh, we asked them, what are you going to try and do on offense? Uh, uh, and, and what are you going to do with that quarterback position? They said, hey, we're trying to prepare for a MAC championship. So we're going to take these three weeks, see if we can three or four weeks before we get to our first MAC game and try and get on schedule. Here's a great opportunity for them to start working on some things, try and get back on schedule, get a rhythm going yeah. on offense. I mean, yeah, there is purpose to what they're trying to do out there. Dell has been the bell cow of this offense in terms of carrying the football. He gets another couple of yards out to the 45-yard line. And the other thing, you know, if you're Wisconsin on the other side of the ball, John, I, I think, you know, again, you're going to run the ball. and But you need to get some rhythm going in that passing game, too, don't you? Get some big plays, but... You do, and, and that's what we saw a little bit in that uh, that last drive. The, un the unfortunate part for us, or if we're looking at it from a coach's perspective, is that they keep hitting these big, big runs, play. these big plays. <laughs> they don't get to sustain a drive. Uh, uh, but I liked how they started that last drive with a, a, a nice run, a little play-action pass, and then they hit that big run again. And uh, I would really like to see Joel Stave get a drive of about 10 or 11 plays where he has to, to pick up a first down with a five- or six-yard pass. And, uh, and just be efficient moving the ball down the field. First and 10, UMass. Beck got the first down a moment ago. And he's got about eight yards on this play. Out of bounds room. in front of the Wisconsin bench. Great block by Tajay Sharp out on the edge there. You know, the thing about it is, from a player's standpoint, coaches are going to grade this film in the second half at 31 to nothing, just as hard as it's going to grade it nothing, nothing in the first quarter, right? I mean, they're going to... Yeah, if not harder, because yeah. you should always be playing to your level, not necessarily the level of your competition or to the scoreboard. You need to go out there and execute on every play. And this is a chance for them to test how mentally tough are they. Can they keep this that, that same level of, of performance when they're up uh, by 31 points? Fidel behind a block by Tyrell Smith. UMass trying to get into a rhythm here. Moves the chains once again with another first down. 
but in, you know, for the defense, this is, this would be a huge victory. I don't care who you're playing against, but if you've got a zero on the scoreboard, your defense is going to take a lot of confidence out of that win. 30 plays, 21 of them have been run, have been passes. Intercepted. Oh, a beautiful interception. A leaping grab by Sojourn Shelton. The true freshman from Santa Clarita, California. They're young in that secondary, but they're talented. Yeah, and just a poor choice by Mike Weggs and uh, throwing that into triple coverage. It almost looked like he wanted to tuck the ball at some point, had nowhere to go, so he thought, well, let's see if I can make a play, and I should have just thrown that one up and over out of bounds. But uh, Shelton with a great job of being in position and making the play that was presented to him. So first and 10 for Wisconsin. Oh. Running hard, Melvin Gordon crossed the 30, close to a first down to the 32-yard line. There is Sojourn Shelton. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And they are really high on him. He became a starter late in camp. Enrolled at UW early. Participated in the uh, 15 spring practices. He came in at about 160, I say 155 pounds, they were telling me. He put on about 20 pounds since he enrolled last January to now. Really worked hard in the weight room and, and everything else. Second and short for Wisconsin. Stop it. Abradaris is there. Incomplete. Nearly a circus catch at the 20-yard line of UMass. Randall Jett in pursuit. Another shot downfield, and, and, and Abradaris had him beat by two or three steps. You can see right there, plenty wide open. Just under throw and allowed that defender to catch up, get a hand in there. Yep. You know, I, I appreciate the fact that they want to stretch the field and continue to get down the field, but I really would like to see them create a rhythm and, and let Stavi get into a rhythm with, with some crossing routes. Uh, look at these, these scoring drives have been very short for the Badgers here today, as we've been mentioning, in terms of plays. Once again, Gordon battling his way for a first down and then some close to the 39-yard line of Wisconsin. Well, again, we were talking, and uh, uh, Stavi needs to create. Right now, you see right here, you know, these drives and these plays. You two plays, 70-yard touchdown. One play, 65-yard touchdown. Another three-yard drive, 65-yard touchdown. That's great, and, and, and it looks great on the scoreboard, but against UMass, um, you know, those are going to happen. When you get into the Big Ten season, you've got to be able to put some things together and, and you can see a center quarterback exchange issue right now they need to regain focus uh, and, and make sure that they finish this game being sharp mishandled snap Popped right up to the freshman running back Corey Clement he <laughs> said wait a minute that's not how my career is supposed to start on a mishandled <laughs> snap and, but he was uh, sound of mind and picked it up and uh, dove in for a couple of yards made something out of nothing Second down. Stavi again going deep. Abbott there is his there. He's got it. Touchdown. Fifty seven yards. Wisconsin thirty seven to nothing. Well, I think they've said just to heck with the short, short mid-range pass game. Let's just go for it all, and, and they've been able to to, to do that. Aberdeer is a great job, great concentration. Whenever you've got a defender on you and you've got somebody with hands on you, it's tough to bring that ball in. He does a great job of finishing the play. He really does. And he looks to be to be a, a an excellent route runner. Kick is up and good by Kyle French. So the All America. Jared Abradaris. Couple of big touchdown receptions today. And Wisconsin now leads it 38 to nothing with 4.46 to go in the third. 
And you had asked earlier in the game, you know, uh, uh, how is it that Aberderis seems to get open so much, uh, and, and why can't they cover him? Part, part of the reason is, you know, you mentioned it right there, the routes that he runs. He's so efficient at running routes, getting in and out of his breaks, selling, uh, you know, not necessarily that he's going deep and then coming back down the stem of a, of a comeback route. Uh, also selling maybe a corner and then hitting that post. He's very good at managing uh, his body and, and control. And you always got to thank those that. Uh, hey, and, and there's the senior going up to the freshman saying, hey, thanks for getting me the ball. <laughs> the freshman, Sojourn Shelton, made the interception. And he probably told him, uh, hey, nice job in the game. Don't try that in practice. Woods, a yard deep. Didn't make the 20 yard line. Hey, coming up later today, 3.30, matter of fact, 3.30 Eastern, it's the Wolverines home opener against Central Michigan, where you'll see Iowa host Northern Illinois. Then in prime time, Nebraska and Wyoming. Today and tonight on BTN and BTN to go. Joel Stavi's done what really won him this quarterback's job. It was a tight battle between he and Kurt Phillips, but his coaching staff decided, hey, listen, we know that Stavi can give us a little bit more depth potentially in the passing game, and that's what we've seen here today. Yeah, more no. downfield capability. Except for a couple of examples, he's, uh, he's been fairly accurate uh, as he's gone downfield. And running back Lorenzo Woodley gets the call for short yardage. He's out of Miami, Florida. Bryce Gilbert on for Wisconsin. Big number 77 right there. Second down and nine for UMass. This is A.J. Doyle, the quarterback, and he pulled it out from the belly of his running back and took the brunt of the Wisconsin defense. They have none of it. It's the third down coming up for UMass. A.J. Doyle is a sophomore out of Lakeville, Massachusetts. Started one game last year as a freshman. For the season, three touchdowns, eight interceptions. He started the season finale against Central Michigan. UMass plays in the Mac. Oh, and he's under a blitz from Connor O'Neill, but got it away nicely to the freshman running back, Lorenzo Woodley. Good coverage by the Badgers. They prevent a first down with the tackle at the 25-yard line. Muldoon is sifting over from the defensive line, and it's fourth down. Well, the reason they were uh, successful on the drive previous to this is they were able to stay in positive situations. They got, you know, three or four yards on first down. They were able to get a couple more on second, and they left themselves in a third and manageable uh, uh, down in distance. On this drive here, they, you know, first and second down, they weren't able to get much, and then now that now they're at fourth and, and, and three, and uh, it's going to force them to punt. They need to stay in positive situations, gain yards on that first down. It's so important to be able to do that. Twin safeties back deep. For Wisconsin, Penzel Doe allows this one to hit and hit a Badger. Now picked up by Doe, and Doe is swarmed under back near the 30-yard line. A lot of situations they can learn from in this game. Uh, that's teams. one of them. Yeah, it's uh, you know as soon as that ball hits the ground, uh, you know that for one, Doe needs to be a little bit more vocal on on whatever their code word is of, of getting away. I'm going to let that ball bounce. Good point. Get out. Get out of the way. Yeah, I, you know, I, I mean, they're ahead. It was, <laughs> Wisconsin's leading 38 nothing, but there are some coaching points here, John, as you well know, that the staff will spend all of next week working on. First and 10. That's the freshman Corey Clement from Glassboro, New Jersey. And he picks up a few yards. Clement is a, a well compacted 210 pounds on a 5'11 frame. He's more of the power runner in this group. And you're, you're going to see three different running backs uh, on a regular basis for Wisconsin. Well, this is a great opportunity for him in, to get in there and get some work. They've also replaced the center. They got Dan Volts in there at center. And 
Uh, you know, at some point during the year, you're going to have some guys go down with injuries. It's a great opportunity to get some of those young guys in there, get them some reps in game situations. That was Stanley Andre who made the tackle that time on Clement. You know, the thing is with Wisconsin this year, their offensive line, they don't have an awful lot of depth on that offensive line. In the spring, John, they only had 13 linemen in camp, you know, and uh, Eight line, eight of the linemen are freshmen or redshirt freshmen, and you know this is—they're getting their first action here in, in many respects. So you don't—you have good quality in the starting five, but you don't have the kind of depth Wisconsin normally has here. And no, line. no, you don't. But uh, that's why it's important uh, for one get for them to get bolts in and get some reps, because you never know. You, you know, you, you may have uh, you know who Llewellyn is is their starting center. You may have to move him out to a guard position and bring bolts in if one of those other guys gets hurt. Madison native Jordan Frederick with that reception out of Madison Memorial and Frederick played started five games last year at 17 catches. That's his first one today. 19 yard game. <laughs> He's got a smile on his face. He juggled that for a moment. <laughs> well, I'm glad there was nobody around me. He could gather it in. Coaches will tell you catch it once. I'm winding down to this third quarter. Tommy on the run. Sam Arneson, the reception. Now this, is a drive. this is a drive that I, I really wanted to see. A, you know, a 19 yard pass, a, a, an eight yard pass. See Stave be able to work the huddle, get guys in and out, uh, get guys to the line of scrimmage, and then start picking apart a defense. And, and, and move the ball down the field through the air. Fifth play of the drive. Motion from Arneson. Clement patiently following the block off the right side of the line. Cuts the first down. And at the 32-yard line. Well, it's only been a tradition at Camp Randall since 1998. But between the third and fourth quarters to the song of Jump Around by House of Pain, 80,000 fans led by that group right there, the student body, go through the traditional jump around. And you'll hear it here in a moment. As Wisconsin has a 38-0 lead heading to the fourth. We'll be jumping around when you come back. Tuesday night, our panel of Big Ten insiders debate the hottest issues in college football and discuss how the nation's biggest stories impact the conference. Big Ten football and beyond, Tuesday at 7 Eastern, only on BTN. Traditions in college football. I'll tell you. <laughs> Never thought I'd see that. <laughs> Wayne, you're pretty good. Uh, you know, I got a little bit of vertical here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll feel it tomorrow, though. <laughs> First and ten for Wisconsin as we begin the fourth quarter here in Madison. Summit. Picking his way up the middle and makes good on about four to five yards. Big runs in this game. Melvin Gordon, 70 yarder. James White, a 51 yard run. Abraderis caught a 65 yard touchdown pass. And what was his other touchdown pass? 47, something like that. 
in the neighborhood. Goodness. Now they've been able to rack up some yards. Now, uh, now it's a matter of finishing the game and, and going out there and play sound football. 57 yards on that effort. There was second half yards touchdown. Plummet again pile driving. They feel like they have running backs who complement each other pretty well. I mean, obviously you've got James White, and then you've got a long strider in Melvin Gordon. We saw how he can run away from people. And then a power back in Corey Clement. Yeah, and, and, and Corey Clement, you, you talk about the power back. I'd like to see him run a little bit more behind his pads, uh, lower that head a little bit more as he's getting towards the line of scrimmage. He's a little bit vertical for, uh, for my like. He'll learn. Yeah, it's only going to take one monster hit, and, and he'll be roll, running in, uh, as low as he can possibly go. Following Derek Strauss, Clement to the outside, to the end zone, touchdown! 23 yards for the freshman, Corey Clement! Yeah, this time, it's, it's just straight up the gut. He gets through that initial line of scrimmage, cuts out outside the linebackers, and finds that there's nobody to be found. How about the spot on his face as he crossed the goal line? <laughs> That's one he's going to remember forever. Oh, forever. Absolutely. His first collegiate touchdown run. He had 90 total touchdowns in high school, so he knows how, what to do with the end zone. But he did it well and how to get there, which is even more important. Opening two minutes, fourth quarter in Madison. Badgers extend to a 45-0 advantage. Welcome back to Madison. Wayne Larrabee, John Jansen on a uh, warm, partly sunny holiday weekend. Buddy's jumped around here, and Wisconsin has jumped to a 45-0 lead. There's Joel Stavi after a shaky start. Come along well. He's got the baseball cap on. Meanwhile, his understudy, Kirk Phillips, warming up. We may see him before this one is over. DJ Woods. Hit at the 20 and driven down. So first down coming up for UMass. The game changer, Joel Stoppy. Stoppy's done a good job. He's been able to make plays with his feet, as you see right there, getting a touchdown. Doing a good job of reading things out uh, outside, delivering that ball to his running backs out in the flat. We've seen him hit the tight end out there a couple of times in, in, in play action pass. And now he's been able to get, get downfield and make some big fast plays, which is why he run this job. His accuracy and the, and the ability to stretch the field and make plays. The game changer presented by John Deere Gator. First down for UMass. Lorenzo Woodley getting some time. Highly touted. Was the prize of uh, Charlie Molner's 2013 recruiting class. One of the most hyped recruits in uh, program history. UMass has had a lot of success over the years on the uh, level of football just below this one, John. Especially in the last 10-15 uh, years. But they're moving up, as we mentioned. This is only their second year on the FBS level. Football Bowl subdivision. Yeah, and we had mentioned some of the changes earlier in the FBS when they when they moved up from the FCS. Uh, one, they get more scholarships, uh, they get more money uh, from uh, from their league and, and from you know other places, so they can have uh, things such as a strength and conditioning coach, which they did not have sure. until this year. Mm -hmm. um, so when you start adding in the fact that they can keep their players uh, there over the summer and, and the guys will begin to stay, that added time along with that the ability to have a strength coach, they're going to make some progress Ball start. quickly. Offense number 20, five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Yeah, the freshman a little uh, nervous there and jumping a bit. The defensive coordinator, and that's him, I believe, looking down there at his papers, Phil Amazian, the man in the middle there. He was here at Wisconsin coaching defensive backs in 1997 and 99, and he had some good ones. He had Jamar Fletcher, Jason Doring, Mike Eccles. They went to a couple of Rose Bowls when he was here, and he uh, had an opportunity to visit with Barry Alvarez prior to the game today. 
There they are. <laughs> Barry Alvarez, boy, he is uh, the legendary one. When he came here, John, in 1990, the only red in this stadium was the uh, was on the ledger, and it was all red. And he turned things around in a hurry, got them to a couple of Rose Bowls, and uh, the rest is history. Over the last 20 years, this is this program's been a force, and uh, Barry Alvarez, the guy who turned it around. Pat Richter, uh, the uh, athletic director. Uh, always has told me he, he said start. I mean offense number 73 five yard penalty second down Pat Richter who played tight end here at Wisconsin and with the Washington Redskins in the NFL he was the athletic director and he said you know I made one really really good decision I decided to hire this Barry Alvarez and <laughs> yep. that really set the program and I'll tell you what John it changed everything not just from the athletic to standpoint the athletic department but also uh, you know applications to school became uh, you know bigger and bigger every year and this is uh, one of the premier academic institutions in America today and uh, you know again athletic department doesn't make you a great academic school but it certainly can help in building that way getting alums involved in, in the, uh, the things that happen uh, that stem from going to Rose Bowls well and, and, and another w thing is to be able to attract coaches uh, you know we talked to Gary Anderson uh, yesterday and he said when, when a Hall of Fame coach such as Bel Barry Alvarez is, is the athletic director and says hey, I'd like for you to come and, and lead our football team uh, it, it means a lot more coming from a guy like that mm -hmm. and, and know that he's not going to be the athletic director at uh, some other university. You know, he's here for the long haul and, and here to continue to build on what he has for the last 20 years. Dial with a nice throw over the middle to Brandon Howard into Wisconsin territory for the Minutemen, first and 10. Well, you know, and the other thing that happened, and you and I were talking about this, John, and Gary mentioned this to us, Gary Anderson, he said, you know, he first really took note of things when he brought Utah State in here last September, and they were leading the Badgers 14 to 3 at halftime and, and eventually lost 16 to 14. He said, but, you know, the jump around the whole atmosphere of this place really is that stayed with him and boy when this job came open and this job came up this was one of the few jobs he said he was actually cons would consider going to yeah and uh, you know because he had mentioned he could have stayed at Utah State for the rest of his career but mm -hmm. uh, when the opportunity to come to a program such as Wisconsin uh, and to work for a guy like Barry Alvarez and to coach kids like they have here at Wisconsin uh, it was just it was too good to, to pass up second down and eight Woodley gets the call once again. He's a good looking back at six feet, 215 pounds. We mentioned with the Minutemen, and it will take a few years. As a matter of fact, uh, Coach Mulder said it'll take a couple of years just to, to bring in, to recruit the kids to run the spread kind of offense they want to utilize at UMass. But it, and that's, you know, whenever you switch an offense or a defense or whatever it is that you come in to do and, and, and it's different from the from the regime that was here before you do you have to recruit different players you have to, to be able to, to attract those players um, and and have them fit your system in talking to uh, uh, the defensive coordinator here uh, you know at, at Wisconsin uh, you know at Dave Arnada the one position that they really needed to develop was that field outside linebacker, the F outside linebacker that they call it. Uh, Ethan Armstrong right now is filling those shoes. Um, and we do have a player down. Yeah, that's uh, Shakur Naismith is down after receiving a pass from A.J. Doyle and absorbing a hit. And we will take a timeout. 9.06 left to go in this one. Wisconsin comfortably in front. Football on BTN is brought to you by State Farm. For auto home life and banking, get to a better state. Science Hall here in Madison at the campus of the University of Wisconsin. First down, UMass. Naismith, uh, the wide receiver, Shakur Naismith, went off pretty much under his own power for UMass. And here's the handoff to the freshman Woodley again. He doesn't get a whole lot of help from his friends up front, and the Badgers are there to corral him at the line of scrimmage, 35-yard line of Wisconsin. Joe Schobert made the tackle there. Wisconsin, Gary Anderson was talking about this. He says, you know, we're going to have to be a lot better than 4-4 four and four in the division, in the Legends division, to get back to the Rose Bowl. 
And obviously they were four and four last year, but they lost four Big Ten games by a combined 16 points last year, three of them in overtime. And everyone kind of forgot about that when they tasted Nebraska in the Big Ten championship game, 70 to 31. Yeah, and, and you look at their schedule this year, the, the first real test for them is going to be that Arizona State. We yep. won't get a chance to see where they're at there. Uh, Purdue, and then they they go to Ohio State, which everybody's going to be watching that game to find out, again, one, where is Ohio State at, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and where is Wisconsin at? Because uh, Ohio State was ineligible last year to come out of that division. And so was Penn State. So was Penn State. So that uh, set Wisconsin to the Big Ten championship game. And they made good on it. Uh, you know, that's kind of like getting a mulligan in golf, but that's hitting the drive right down the middle after that mulligan. Pass thrown away. Incomplete. And, and this is the game, and everybody just forgot about the four and four, you know, Big Ten campaign. Take a look at this last season in the championship game. Monty Ball, 202 yards, three touchdowns, 70 to 31 over number 14, Nebraska. Yeah, they, they scored it about every way possible. They saw a direct direct snap there to James White. A little handoff to Aberderis, who throws back. Hit Kurt Phillips. Fourth down, UMass. This is A.J. Doyle. Penalty marker is down, and Doyle throws it away. Doyle's pass incomplete. Well, you know, a Holding lot of times you get a job. Offense, number 70. That penalty decline, Wisconsin's ball, first down. But, you know, sometimes you get a job, and there isn't any rebuilding required. I mean, now, there's certain components of the team to rebuild, and, and you're putting your program in place, but Gary Anderson is joining a program that now has a 20-year legacy of success. Well, yeah, 20 year legacy of success and three consecutive Big Ten championships. Mm -hmm. You know, so we asked them, uh, what, what is it, how is it different than taking over a program that, uh, like you did at Utah State, where you had to rebuild? And uh, he, he mentioned the fact that, well, you know, uh, the, the components are there and maybe there's not as much that he has to rebuild, but there's always a rebuilding factor, mm -hmm. uh, you know, involved. And, and there's going to be, a, 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 I'm sure, a slight change a little bit in the offense and the way he calls it as he progresses in the next three, four years. Uh, I think the biggest change, and we, we touched on this a little bit before our last break, is defense. You know, and, and, and switching to that 3-4 and trying to get those guys who are outside linebacker type guys who can rush the quarterback but also cover a receiver in the slot. Um, you know, inside linebackers that are, are comfortable playing over guards instead of just being in the middle. Bart Houston is in at quarterback. Connor McAvoy is in at wide receiver. He's in the slot at the top of your screen. He's a junior college transfer quarterback. Larry Clemens got a first down. The quarterback derby was a three-way battle between Stavi, Phillips, and McAvoy. With uh, Bart Houston being the youngster of the group. And uh, McAvoy, transfer out of Arizona Western, came in here. Just three years of quarterback experience, one year in high school and two on the junior college level. He's a great athlete. They're, they've got some things for him, perhaps, on the outside. If he's not going to play quarterback, he's going to reach the field, and he is today. He's flanked to the bottom of your screen. Natural runner runs to daylight and just barrels people over when they get in his way. There's a look at Bart Houston. Oh, a little high on that exchange there. Yeah, what a great job by uh, by Clement of. of gathering that ball and bringing it back down. That could have been uh, a disaster for him. So Corey Clements, a true freshman. Bart Houston is a redshirt freshman out of Dublin, California. Now they get a timeout called. Wisconsin. So Wisconsin third. will talk it over. May not have been happy with the personnel they had on the field. Gary Anderson will get things in order when we come back. Carillion Tower here on the uh, campus of Wisconsin. Social sciences in there. 
45 nothing Wisconsin over UMass. Wayne Larrabee, John Jansen, great to have you with us on this holiday weekend. We hope you all travel safely wherever you're going. Big Ten football, college football is underway in earnest. Second down for Wisconsin. Clement, the freshman, getting a fourth quarter workout. Impact players. We talked about them earlier, John, and there they are. Boy, did they make an impact. Yeah, you know, you know James White, 11 rushes, 143 yards. Melvin Gordon, 13 rushes, 144 yards. You talk about two guys that, that can really be explosive, and, uh, you know, you almost feel bad. You know, because you look at other teams and they've got one running back that they hand the ball off to and they're going to be 1,500 yard rushers or whatever. And, and these guys are going to share those yards, but they're going to be so much fresher come, you know, that, that championship game. If they make it back to that point to have two guys carry the load throughout the football season. Uh, and then you add Corey Clement Corey as he grows throughout the football season to have all of those weapons in the backfield. Uh, Wisconsin's sitting pretty right now with that. Got to be impressed with this uh, Clement kid. It, as I mentioned, a true freshman from Glassboro, New Jersey. Finished his high school career with 6,245 rushing yards. A stop and go there. Bought him some extra yardage. You know what? Uh, what I really like about him is is the fact that he carries that ball high and tight. He he does a good job of, of of keeping that ball close to his body. He's not swinging it around. He's not spinning. He's not trying to make dramatic moves. He just gets there, gains his three yards, and, and, and moves the pile forward. Wisconsin just salting it away right now. Under four minutes to go on this one. So the Badgers will take on. Uh, Got another home game coming up against Tennessee Tech. Same time, same station, BTN, next week. Tennessee Tech, a noon Eastern time start, 11 o'clock here. Students will be here by at least 11.30, I would figure, and they'll be in good form by the time jump around happens in between the third and fourth quarter. Houston, a swing pass to the flank. He's got the big tight end, Sam Arneson, 6'4", 255. That's a nice target to hit for a first down. Yeah, it, it, it is so nice to have tight ends. And you look at the Wisconsin uh, uh, lineup, and, and you see the tight ends that they have, you know, uh, Pedersen and Arneson and uh, Wozniak and DeSico. They have... A lot of weapons, not just at that tight end position, which is, is can be a, a quarterback's best friend, but also a fullback to mm -hmm. be able to hit Watt with, a, with throwing the ball out of the backfield. Uh, we've seen James White catch the ball out of the backfield. We've seen the different receivers that have been able to catch the ball. They are on offense in no need of, of any more weapons. Now, I'd like to see the receiving core step up just a little bit more. We've had some drop passes, uh, ones that uh, maybe they weren't necessarily right on the mark but could be caught, uh, and, and I'd like to see them step up and raise their level of play just maybe one or two notches. John, you really get a thumbnail. You know, Wisconsin not quite as deep as they used to be on the offensive line, but they have good people in the starting capacities. They're very deep, four deep at tight end. They have plenty of running backs, as you mentioned. Stavia, if he plays the way he did in the second half today, is plenty good enough at quarterback. They're deep on the defensive and experience in the defensive front seven. They're a little young in the secondary. But uh, all in all, this is going to be a very good Wisconsin squad. At least uh, it looks like it will be as this season ensues. Yeah, and, and, and if this coaching staff uh, is what we think they are in terms of uh, the quality of coaches, they're going to continue to grow and improve as the season goes on. And you're going to see, you know, halfway through the season or, or at some point uh, later in the season that that young defensive backfield is not going to look so young anymore. They're going to start making some of those plays that, uh, uh, that, that, that are a little bit more challenging. They're going to throw more of the play book at them and, uh, and get a little more creative, especially with that defense. Man, it is so exciting to see uh, the, the defense that they put in place. Uh, it's just a very dynamic, explosive defense. Clement rambling inside the five. Twenty-three yard gallop. How about that? 
And that's a good description of it, too. He did some galloping in there. You know, he, he hops over a block there, hops over another one, starts to make a little cut there and hopping over another blocker. Great awareness of what's going on around him. Clement again driving to the end zone. Looks like maybe that ball uh, is on the ground. That ball come out. UMass says they might have it. And the officials unraveling the pile. As time winds down of this one. Oh, that ball did pop out there. Yeah, he but, didn't uh, look like there were a couple of Badgers that were going to fall on it. Yeah, the Badgers got it, but uh, he didn't get the end zone. And Charlie Mulner and Gary Anderson exchange handshakes. The Badgers with a 45-0 season opening win over the Minutemen of the University of Massachusetts. Elvin Gordon, big plays. Same for James White. Stavi had a huge uh, touchdown, a couple of touchdown passes, big touchdown passes to Abra Deris, 65 yards for a touchdown, 57 yards for a touchdown. Chris Borland did his thing in the middle of that defense, a new look defense, a lot of different shifting and motion up front with that defense, but nonetheless, the result, a shutout for the Wisconsin Badgers on opening day 2013. That is the uh, Gary Anderson is the first uh, head coach to open up with a season debut with a shutout, Wayne, since Ivy Williamson mm. defeated Marquette 41 0 by a score of, in 1949. Great right For John Jansen and our entire BTN crew here in Madison, Wisconsin, I'm Wayne Larry.